You're listening to the Asotucon Sessions by Effective live from Asotucon 2024. I'm Joe Overby, and I'm here on the Asotucon podcast stage in collaboration with Effect TV. And sitting across from me is Tony Lucas, who is the GM of Casa Autoplex. Tony, good to see you, man. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, I want to get, get a sense of, of your automotive journey here. You, you started um, at uh, in automotive in 2011. So what's been your the steps you've taken along the way to, to get where you are at, at Casa Autoplex? 2010. Um, 2010, okay. Yeah. Uh, born and raised in Brazil. Um, I moved to United States in 2010. I uh, had an opportunity to start working in, in a car lot by here, pay here as a porter. Um, Man, it was kind of a dream come true from a kid coming from Brazil to like, you know, work around cars. Like, man, this is really, really cool. Uh, I was a porter, clean out the lot. Um, from Brazil, starting in December, it was cold. And uh, uh, the dealer said, um, he's a pressure washer. I didn't know what a pressure washer was, but look cool. Um, he's the cars, go pressure wash the cars. Pull this thing out and put some gas in it once in a while and pressure wash them. I did that for a little while, then learned how to detail cars, went in detail cars, um, started working at a body shop and sanding a body man, um, try to learn how to, how to paint, sucked at it. <laughs> Cost a lot of money painting and trying to clear coat and things like this. But I always had my eyes on the salespeople. And uh, at the time, I was man, you know, the dream was, man, if I can just learn enough English to sell a car and live like these folks, Looks like they don't do anything all day. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Were you right in your assumption? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like the golf cars and all that. It's so super cool. Want to do that? Um, and that's what I did. Uh, working on my English, uh, pick up some books, uh, you know, movies and things. Learn, learn English and start answer the phones for them whenever we went to lunch and things like that. Sold my first car. Um, I got into uh, F and I and a lot and. Um, contract deals, sucked at that, uh, didn't do really good at it. You know, it took me like three hours to sign a deal and to talk to people and, and like, you know, and all this stuff and uh, moved on to the desk, I became a sales manager, did a bit better at that. Uh, that deal went through some, some, some things in his life and uh, um, he had to close the car lot. And uh, at the time I was also his wholesaler that, you know, acquired cars from franchises around town. Uh, the GSM at a GMC store in San Angelo, Texas said, man, you should come work for me. It's like, I'm kind of rough around the edges. I don't know. This dealership looks kind of fancy. I, I, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, it's like, I'll, I'll train you. I'll, I'll, I'll spend some time with you and, and you, you do well selling cars. Uh, went sell cars for him. Uh, you know, he gave me some ties and, uh, and the button-up shirt, yes. I not always earned the right to wear cut off. Mm -hmm. I sold cars for seven years wearing suit and tie. And, uh, uh, you know, for me, it was the greatest opportunity in my life. Man, I'm here now in this franchise. Uh, I can't screw this up. You know, my mom, growing up in Brazil, said, man, folks like us, we don't get a lot of opportunities in life. We'll never get one. Make sure you take care of it, you know. And uh, um, that's what I did. I took all these scripts, learned all the, the things and, um, you know, Work my ass off. Not supposed to say things like that here, huh? That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it uh, sounds like gonna, it sounds gonna, like you, you maximized the, the opportunity. And yeah. I understand you were used car director for four years. What yeah. did you learn about the used car market in that time? And what are some things you've carried from that into your current role? Yeah, um, it took. I, I guess what I learned on used cars is, man, it, it, and it, that's my my frustration in like podcasts like this and in conferences that we never it's never enough time to cover everything, yeah. right? Like it's just so many moving pieces, and we start talking about one problem, and uh, it connects to all kinds of other things, and uh, that's what that's what I learned, man. We continue learning every day, and things are changing all the time. Uh, uh, th that's probably the biggest thing I took from uh, from running a used car operation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, if if my timeline is right. You know, March 2019 to October 2023, that also was the all of COVID. So how did yeah. how did COVID impact the used car market, and how did you as a, a dealer overcome those challenges in, in used cars during that period? Ah, uh, it was awesome. And in the beginning, kind of was uh, um, 
frustrating. And you know, as soon as it hit, we had a bunch of old agers and uh, all this stuff. But uh, we did really, really well. We learned how to, you know, how to leverage that and, uh, you know, full plan used cars and uh, keep the cash in a dealer's hand. Um, if you have a creative dealer, the cash should always be on their hand so we can acquire more stores. Uh, we turn inventory 17 times a year. Um, raise market share of uh, used cars in El Paso and the Casa Auto Group from 3% to 7.5% in El Paso. Went from 300 used cars for, to 650 used cars per month. Uh, we did really well. So what role has the, the certified pre-owned market played for, for the group? Certified pre-owned school. It, it, I, I think it does depend on, on the franchise. I've dealt with... Mm, 15 different ones now. Um, there's some benefits from some that you don't have on others, uh, like how they um, a transition from rentals into CPO and things like this. But uh, I, I do, because we do run a pretty strong reassurance business too, so there is uh, uh, some benefits and, and, um, and oranges that we give to the customer that's part of your reassurance strategy. Uh, but I do believe that CPO, the biggest benefit is uh, uh, the marketing part of it. Um, it's showing up on searches, right? If you go out of trade car gurus, if they uh, clicking on certified, I want to show up on those searches. So I, I believe I, I believe in on CPO, but um, it depending on which manufacturer, there's different games there, different place. Yeah, um, and I imagine too. I mean, having so many OEMs that you guys work with within the dealer group. Yeah, you know, some of them have expanded the eligibility requirements, so mm -hmm. it's. You know, it, it's kind of different rules and different strategies yeah. based on whether it's a lot harder to find a three-year-old than a, a ten-year-old car. Yeah. Um, how have you guys overcome some of the inventory challenges, uh, specifically in CPO? Like how we acquire cars to yeah. become CPO. Right, right. Um, man, the way I'm doing right now with Casa Plex, there's a couple, a couple good programs there with you know Hyundai, Honda is a good program, Ford it's a good program too. Um, I don't buy cars from auction, right? Like, uh, I don't do that. Um, you know, did that for a long time. I believe I did that well, know how to do it, uh, but it just, it still sucks, even whenever you do it at a high level. But uh, as CPO wise, I do leverage the, 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 the rental programs that OEMs have, like um, Hyundai, uh, from, a, from a rental to a CPO, the CPO is free, right? Like, so, um, we're able to leverage the program a little bit and earn some dealer cash on some of this, uh, the Ford program and, and all that. So that's how we do it. And um, you know, a lot of a lot of large dealer groups and even even some of the smaller groups have started used car standalone programs. You know, the, the Echo Parks of the world. Um, is that something that that you've tried at, at Casa, or is is it is it something that you know you see value in that that as a value proposition for consumers? Standalone used cars. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, so that's kind of how I started with Casa. Um, I, I helped them build the uh, Casa Finance, which is uh, an in-house finance that we have. We grew that from zero to. Uh, Twelve million dollar portfolio now, very conservative program, but uh, th there's a couple benefits that come from this, right? We realize that uh, CarMax, sixty percent of CarMax transactions are financed by mm -hmm. CarMax, so there's something there. Uh, but also, uh, it's there's some benefit to the community. We know Paso and the border town. Uh, there's a, a, a you know subprime opportunities there that we can leverage and kind of like farm these customers in inside of a. a, a, a a company, right? Like you give them opportunity, house finance, and and man, if if you do do all these things right, um, you can go to one of the sister stores or franchise and buy your dream car. So we're trying to leverage the program, which is a beneficial for the community, but also uh, very profitable uh, deal to do buy here, pay here. So we have two locations, which is standalone uh, buy here, pay here locations that we leverage Casa, uh, Casa Finance and the Autoplex now, where I'm the general manager. I use Casa Finance as one of the lenders. Well, uh, we've just got a, a couple few minutes left, um, but I wanted to close on this. You know, you mentioned that when you, when you moved here and were learning English, you one of the things that helped was books and movies. So what were some of the books and, and movies that sort of helped you um, in learning a new language? The Titanic. Oh, yeah. It's my favorite movie. It's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Very movie. Good. The Titanic. I've, I watched The Titanic just about 100 times. Like, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, no, but I did that a lot of movies and, and uh, books. I still read a lot. I know there's audibles and things like this now. They're cool. I like to read because it helps with my grammar uh, and sure. all that. You know, like I, I believe communication is a big, big deal. And if we did this podcast in Portuguese, 
I would, would be lost. Yeah, I would be yeah. nowhere. So I continue working <laughs> on my second language. Uh, I do speak um, uh, English as my second language. Portuguese is my first language, and Spanish is my third. Well, Tony, you're the you're the king of the world here, like just like Leo. So thank you so much for uh, for being on the show, and uh, that'll do it for this edition. Everybody, give Tony a round of thank applause. You. Thank you for listening to this Asotu Khan session by Effective. If you want more content like this, you can check out our other podcasts. We have a daily show called The Automotive Troublemaker, Monday through Friday, here on podcasts, also live streamed on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. We also have a long form podcast called Auto Collabs. Auto Collabs. And if you just want to go a little deeper into this community, you should sign up for our regular email. We put our heart and soul into it. You can get it for free by going to asotu.com. We'll see you next time.